So intermittent fasting has gained a lot of popularity lately, um, specifically like in the media and, the, and in the diet industry. Many people have heard of like all the great benefits that they've had. Um, and so they've started doing it by just skipping breakfast to fast, okay? And this, my friend, is actually doing more harm than good. Um, many people consider fasting because they've heard it can increase immunity and uh, resilience to viruses, which is great right now since we're in the middle of like cold flu virus season. Um, but it also reduces inflammation, improves sleep quality. You have a greater mental clarity due to increased neuron development in the brain. It also slows aging biomarkers. So it helps for, it's been proven to help prevent Alzheimer's disease. Um, there's a decreased blood glucose levels, so it improves insulin sensitivity, meaning it helps reduce your risk of type 2 diabetes. Um, it increases the human growth hormone in your body, so your body better repairs itself, that cellular autophagy, that self-eating, self-repair. Um, it helps you maintain skeletal muscle mass um, and keeps your metabolism very high when you do that. Um, and it also burns fat, specifically the fat that's around your midsection, plus you're going to have more energy during the day. So yes, it does all of these things if it is done safely and correctly. You must pick the right protocol for you and your goals, and you must be eating the right amount of food when you're not fasting. If your fast is simply skipping breakfast and pounding coffee until 2 p.m., you're doing more harm than good, okay? You're not reaping the benefits, um, specifically the healing benefits of fasting. In fact, you're actually increasing your cortisol levels, which is directly related to belly fat retention, and you're also taxing your adrenal glands and wrecking havoc on your hormones, okay? The way that we use intermittent fasting in the faster way is not a form of calorie restriction. We still eat all the food just in a shorter form feeding window, okay? So intermittent fasting protocols vary greatly. There's a 12-12 protocol, meaning you fast for 12 hours and you feed or you eat for 12 hours. There's a 14-10 protocol, a 16-8 protocol, an 18-6, a 24 protocol, and a 24-24. Okay, the benefits and the effects of these kinds of fasts gr vary greatly between all of these protocols. So you need to make sure you're choosing the correct protocol for your goals and your body. So the protocol we most frequently start with in the faster way is a 16-8, although I will say I have quite a few clients on the 14-10 protocol as well. Meaning the 16-8 would mean that you fast for 16 hours and you eat for eight hours, which most of the time that's going to look like uh, finishing dinner about 7 p.m., going to bed um, with no like bedtime snack or anything like that, getting the kids off to school in the morning, um, heading into work, and then you break your fast around 11 a.m. You eat your breakfast meal, okay? So you're going to fast for 16 hours, most of which you are asleep. Then you'll postpone, not skip, your breakfast meal um, till about like 11 o'clock, okay? So if you've caught on, your breakfast meal literally means just the meal that breaks your fast, okay? I'd like to briefly touch on the old adage that you've heard, like breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And this was a marketing campaign, a really good marketing campaign um, by the General Mills Corporation, which is a breakfast cereal company. Um, it was created in the early 90s and it stuck. So kudos to them, but there's actually zero evidence and zero research to prove this claim. It is merely a slogan. It does not matter what now, it does not matter when you break your fast, but it does matter what you break your fast with, okay? So, People come into the fast way and say, I have tried fasting, but like I didn't lose any body fat. Or I tried fasting and I was absolutely miserable. I had no energy. The problem is they have implemented intermittent fasting incorrectly. They have the wrong type of fast. They're not eating enough in their fasting window and they're unknowingly breaking their fast um, if they, you know, before the time is up, okay? Intermittent fasting may be a great strategy for you to start incorporating right now, but then again, it might not be, okay? I would just need to kind of talk to you first, kind of figure out what your health history is, um, what your stress levels are, what your sleep quality is, kind of what you're dealing with right now, along with like what your goals are. We would just kind of need to have a conversation and I would need to make sure that intermittent fasting is something you need to jump into right now. And if you do, what kind of fast should you be doing? So many times, like I said, my clients are on a 16-8 or 14-10 protocol. 
But depending on certain, you know, certain circumstances, um, I do have some clients on a 12-12 protocol. I have some clients every now and then we do a, an extended fast, um, which is like a 24-hour fast. Okay, fasting is not like a one-size-fits-all strategy. And that's what's great about the faster way is we're not one size fits all either. Okay. All of our strategies, including intermittent fasting are customized and personalized based on your body and your goals. So having a certified coach help to lead and guide you through this journey is going to help you learn to work smarter and not harder. So if you want to learn more about the specific topic of intermittent fasting, you can grab the free guide that I have linked in the comments below. Thanks guys.